Andy in the building. All right. All Hi, right. how you doing, Blackout I, Man? I am doing all right. I'm doing all right. So thank you very much for reaching out and uh, coming on the uh, podcast. Yeah. Um. So, uh, give us a little bit of a uh, little bit of background about yourself. You know, introduce yourself and and uh, you know, give us a little bit of background. Okay, well, first, lock out me, and I wanted to extend a wholehearted thank you to you for allowing me to use your platform to share my experience at the CDL uh, Academy at, at, at YRC Freight and also um, share my experience and my thoughts and opinions as a salary P&D. P and D driver locally at uh, Terminal One Eight Seven in Brooklyn, New York. So I really do appreciate you giving me this opportunity. You well, welcome. basically, um, thank you. <laughs> basically, um, the catalyst for me wanting to share my thoughts and opinions and experience on YRC Freight is that I feel disrespected, I feel disregarded, devalued, and dismissed. I mean, I've been out of work on a, a lay a hard layoff status since May 2023. Now, initially, I was under the impression that I was fired. I had received a, a text message from the terminal manager indicating for me not to come in until further notice. There was no further explanation. I hadn't had any disciplinary issues or anything that would be of merit for me to receive that message. So that's why I was under the impression that I was fired. Okay. I, like a lot of people, you know, I don't like feeling ignored, you know. Now, it wasn't until I had reached out to the terminal manager numerous times in which I never re received a response. That's email at the company, myyellow.com. That's voice messages, text messages. And I had even went to the terminal. And in addition to that, I went to the new pin terminal down the block. Totally dismissed, n nothing. Now, I, one of the um, dispatchers was kind enough to forward me the uh, 1-800 number for the Kansas City HR department. Now, at that time, when I contacted them and went through all the prompts, because you got to go through the prompts to actually reach somebody, at that time, I was informed that I was still an employee, but under uh, hard labor status, which I never was privy to, <laughs> you know? Now, I had requested a letter for hardship relief. Remember, I had a paycheck of over a buck now, okay? And I thought I was fired. I have bills, just like any other person. I have, you know, financial responsibilities. I have rent. I have my car on um, commitment payments. I have a uh, credit card, you know? I needed a letter to, you know, receive some type of hardship, hardship relief. <laughs> these people, when I say these people, I'm referring to YRC, uh, freight management, you know, the dispatchers who weren't able to help me because they said they couldn't issue the letter without the crew with a chance, uh, the terminal manager who is unresponsive. Then after calling the 1-800 number, they can't assist me. They tell me I would have to disclose, which I feel is a violation of my, um, my, uh, personal information. I would have to disclose my creditor's name, <laughs> you know, my landlord and all of this, you know, personal information in order to receive a letter from them. So I kept on calling, calling, calling. I finally was able, because the, the uh, person I spoke to in the garnishment department of YRC Human Resources was a lady named Brenda. Very hostile, very rude. She, um, before hanging up the phone, I had asked her abruptly, might, might I add, I had asked her, could she um, give me the number in name of her supervisor so I could so I could speak to them and try to explain the situation. She refused. You don't need to know who my supervisor is. Hang up. I kept on calling. I said, they probably going to fire me after this now because <laughs> I must have called about a good 40 times. And then I finally reached this woman, Barb Stanberg, I think her name was, who finally gave me the, gave me the number for the regional manager. Now, she was kind enough to respond back 
and, you know, explain the process that she couldn't give me a letter that they, YRC Freight, has a, a contract with a third party contractor called Thomas and Company that would distribute employee, um, you know, records and verification. And again, this same company, Thomas and Company, they they uh, would have to have, you know, access to who your creditors are and different agencies and things like that. I feel like, you know, this is a total violation of your privacy as a, um, you know, employee. In addition to that, what I can understand how and why this company has been rife with, with mismanagement and misdirection for years. You you have an H and R personnel that are salary. You have administrative personnel with your salary at the terminal and at the headquarters. But none of these people can facilitate a request for employee verification. You have to hire an outside company to do this. Okay, <laughs> so I've got that out. Now, basically, um, I just wanted to say my initial contact with YRC Freight um, came a few months ago through uh, ND posting where I saw that they were uh, looking for candidates for the CDL Academy. Now, um, they have a few throughout the country. They have, I think, in Pennsylvania, Ohio, May Maybrook, New York, and in Hagerstown, Maryland. Um, I went to the Hagerstown, Maryland um, Academy where there were two instructors, and at the time there was another student. And even with that as an advantage, with, without having to compete with eight or, you know, a full class, um, you know, I just didn't receive the, re support, the support services that I needed, you know, to get through the program. Um, I want to let the, the viewer audience know, should you consider this uh, academy with YRC Freight, I want you to be aware that they make you sign a two-year contract, you know, and that is in comparison to other mega carriers who have the industry standard of one. Now, if you don't um, complete the uh, academy or you're expelled, I do believe that they do waive, you know, the uh, the cost or what have you. But in the event that you are successful in the academy, you will have to stay with them for the full two for the full two years duration of the contract. And if you don't, they'll sue you. You know, you will be sued, and that will be for. Uh, interest and the fees associated with your boarding and rental car because they do provide a rental car as well as gas uh, reimbursement. So just know that you have to stay two years. You know, at this juncture, uh, your audience may be aware that uh, YRC is going through hostile uh, contract negotiations with the Teamsters Union. And let me just speak on them real quick. <laughs> Real quick, fast, in a hurry. Teamster. Now, they wanted, wanted you to pay $500 initiation fee. I reached out to them to see if they could help me get a letter or, you know, get in contact with the... Um hmm. Where's my leaf? Mm. Terminal manager as a liaison... They never even responded, but they want dues, though. Okay. Just make sure I understand. <laughs> you know, um, so I went into the background about the school and everything. Now I want to share with you my experience as a local P&D driver. Okay. I really, it's not, listen, it wasn't all bad until it went bad, okay? <laughs> and that that's the truth. You know, I, 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 I am... And I was thankful for the experience because they, YRC, did offer and extend to me my first introduction into trucking. Be prior to that, I had only had, uh, you know, my B-class license, which I used to drive shuttle buses and school buses and paratransit throughout the years after I decided to make a career change. And I, I just felt I didn't have the personality 
to deal with people and on an interpersonal level. I said, I'm going to be a tractor trailer driver and make me some money. Okay, so, um, I mean, like, from sharing my experience, I really, you know, I really don't feel I have anything to lose at this point. I mean, I don't, uh, technically, I don't have a job. I don't have a restart date. You know, the only thing I could lose is my residence and, you know, my credit rating standard, stand, standing, excuse me, if I don't get this letter, which, you know, they're just giving me a hard time. And I don't understand that because this company has, uh, you know, went, I'm, I know I'm probably talking fast. I'm just trying to get everything in, in. This company has had a bailout, you know, through the CARES Act for $700 million. They got bailed out, but you don't, you put me on layoff status and I can't get a letter. If <laughs> you bail me out, help me out, you know? Um, I just want to say as a local P and D driver, I really did enjoy the job despite the equipment being old. And when I say old, um, like for instance, I was driving a 2005 Volvo. That's, you know, that's what I was doing my training on, you know, and they had some trucks that was even old as 2005. So, so what, what y'all did with that 700 million, you know, I'm sure a lot of people want to know. Um, I just want to say also that, you know, you, I, I did enjoy the experience and I felt that I, I, at, before things went bad with the terminal manager, and maybe I can attribute that to her, Maria. Hey, Maria, you probably going to hear about this girl. Hey, <laughs> okay. Maria, I felt at, before things went bad where she wasn't responding and maybe I can attribute that to her being stressed out, you know, managing the, the multiple terminals and, you know, the situation and state of affairs with the Teamsters, maybe that's why, but still, I don't feel like that's really an excuse. You know, I, I told her she could even lead a letter with the security people, you know, I don't, I don't know. But at one point I did feel as if she was position, positioning me for mentorship. And I say that because she would tell me about training opportunities where I could be a trainer, even though I was a novice in trucking, but they could get me certified after I had, you know, gained some experience behind the wheel and I would be certified. And, you know, that would definitely look good on a resume. She has shared with me about there were uh, opportunities for all expenses paid trucking expos, including, um, you know, conventions that were, you know, exclusively for women truckers. She did tell me that. You know, and she did mention it was, you know, company paid, can't, company sponsored. She told me about uh, diversity inclusion committees, some of which she has founded and is an active member on. So I don't know if that's like, a, a, what do you call that? Help me out. Help me out, Locke, man. A conscious of affairs? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I had huh? slightest idea. <laughs> You know how they say that? Oh, it's a, it's a, um, you know, like when you, it's like, a, when you have like a, you, you represent in both parties. Like, it's like a, you know, well, anyway, being that she was a founder and a member, you know, in, in a terminal means, I don't know if that's like, you know, conflict of interest. Uh, uh, Yes, yes. Thank you, Lockout Man. There you go. Okay. okay. I don't know if that's a conflict of interest seeing how she founded some of these committee boards for diversity inclusion that she had mentioned to me. But these were all some of the things that she had mentioned, you know, during what I perceived to be was mentorship. You know, she had also, you know, directed me to the company website. Where, you know, because she was like really selling the company to me, like, you know, like this was the pantheon of trucking, you know, like, oh, yeah, this company's been around for 100 years, you know, founded by the Harold Brothers in, you know, Oklahoma City, you know. But what she didn't tell me is that the company was right with lawsuits and judgments. You know, she didn't tell me about the 28, 20, 2018 lawsuit filed by the U.S. government, Department of Defense for Fraudulent Business Practices, and how they, yes, they, YRC Freight, had, you know, um, settled 
to repay the government without admitting four, of course, because you know that's how they do. $6.85 million. She didn't tell me about the 2019 lawsuit by investors for YRC Freight where they settled to repay those investors $2.8 million. Okay? She didn't tell me. She's telling me about the women in trucking expos and conventions that are all with, uh, all companies sponsored to pay. She didn't tell me about the Mississippi E. EOC filing for for gender discrimination against women drivers because they weren't hiring them. And the one woman driver that they did hire, they fired her, you know, um, after the completion of her first route. And that's in Mississippi with the EOC. You know, and all of these lawsuits, you can Google, Google them. You don't have to take my word for it because that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> you know, and I think that, you know, I, she didn't tell me also about the contract negotiations and how, you know, you know how it is. You first in to get hired, you first in to get fired. You know, you know, I mean, if they fire me at this point, it's going, it's going to be retaliative. And I'm sure any labor board would deem it as such, you know, for sharing my experiences. But like I said, I have nothing to lose. I don't have a start date. I don't have a paycheck. And most importantly, I don't have that letter I've been asking for. You know, I've been asking Maria, you know, the terminal manager for the letter, uh, the regional manager for the letter, the human resources for the letter. You know, this is just to get these people off my back until I can find another employment opportunity. I'm sure I will. You know, I have a CDL. I have Tanker. I have um, Hazmat. I have doubles and triples. And I have, uh, wait, oh, Pat, I said Hazmat, right? <laughs> yeah. And I have tow truck and school bus. And I mean, if worse come to worse, you know, I have to get back out there with the kids. You know, <laughs> but, you know, that's what it is and how it is. You know, and I just want to say one thing lastly. You know, it is so sad that, you know, a company such as Yellow, YRC Freight and its subsidiary companies, Lupin, Holland, Rollway, Redaway, et cetera, et cetera, have, have for years systematically defrauded the government, overcharging for freight. I mean, they are ripping, or excuse me, were ripping off veterans. And I'll just throw in allegedly, even though it is on the record, <laughs> even down to the settlement. You know, these veterans, they fight and they risk their life, their limb and liberty for our freedom. And, and that's how you pay them back. And then you have the audacity after rip it off the government to have to get bailed out. And now you're looking for help again. What did y'all do with the, with the money? Because you, did, you didn't put it in, in trucks, you know, all the mega carriers, they switched to automatic. 2005, manual Volvo. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Well, thank you, Slock Out Man. I was just trying to make sure I get got everything in there. And I appreciate, you know, just giving me uh, just a way to vent because I've been frustrated. You don't understand. And maybe you do. I've been playing telephone tag with this company and its representatives for weeks just to get a letter to help me keep a roof over my head. You understand? I've had to go to my lo local food, food pantry to get a helping hand so I can eat. You understand? I don't know when or if I have a paycheck coming in. And then when I went to the Department of Labor for additional job placement and or training, I was told that it's showing up in the system I'm still employed. You know, but I'm trying to explain to them I'm in a layoff. They don't see that, you know? So it's like a precarious position I'm in, and I'm just not getting the help and assistance that I needed. So I hope anybody looking for um, employment, whether you, you know, um, a veteran like yourself, Mr. Lockout Man, or, you know, or if you're a, new, a newbie like me, you know, definitely do your due diligence, not on just YRC Freight and it's just in its subsidiary companies, but all trucking companies. <laughs> you, you know, you'll be glad you did and thankful that you did later on, <laughs> you know? Cool.
This coffee smells like shit. All right, all right. That's a uh, that's 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 a hell of a lot that uh that's going on over at uh <laughs> YRC. So for everybody, uh, of course, uh, YRC is uh Yellow Freight. Uh, they merge uh from several companies to come up with YRC Freight worldwide. So it's YRC Freight. Uh. Andy, I, I can hear the accent. Uh, <laughs> I can hear the New York accent all the way. So where, where are you from uh, in New York? Oh, I'm born and raised in New York, New York City, the house, you know, Brooklyn. <laughs> that, was where, that was the terminal I was at, the Brooklyn terminal. Now, be, now whew, listen, I... I commend you, New York guys. All right, you know, as as a as a truck driver that's that's driving in New York, I commend you because I could never do it. Um, majority of the majority of the time that you was up in New York, you 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 drove in the New York area, or you you was over the road. What what were you with uh, YRC? No, actually, I was a local P and D driver. So for the, because I wasn't there very long, but for the time I was there, I was definitely able to gauge everything I just went through, you know. And I was talking like a mile a minute because I had to try to get everything out. They hired me for what they call a P and D driver, where you're picking up freight and you're delivering freight. So for, for the majority of the month and change, I was there. Yeah, I wasn't there long, but like I said, I did my due diligence and I then found out. You know, I was able to gauge that. You know, it was questionable if you might want to stay. So I was training with other drivers. What What is P and D? I mean, what What is that? Oh, okay. P and D is like where you doing pickup and delivery. So sometimes we would go into like Queens. Um, sometimes it would be like in uh, other parts of Brooklyn, Manhattan. You know those areas. Um, they do have another terminal in uh, New York, out in Long Island. I think I want to say is it Best Page or. Something like that. Deer Park, maybe? <laughs> I know it's somewhere like in Long Island, like in Suffolk County. Plainview, I think that's it. Plainview. They have a, um, a terminal out there as well. But um, at the terminal where, that I was at, it was like mostly Queens, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. So this is where, from... You know, so, where, so this is from terminal to terminal, not, not from uh, terminal to drop off and deliver at at a shipper and or receiver this is this is from pickup and delivery at terminal to terminal right well it can vary there were times where not myself but where other tractor trailer drivers would go from terminal to terminal you know and do pickup and delivery or uh salvage i think it's called uh that's like when um the they have like an outside contract and you get in the freight from them. So they, they did have that, but most of the time it was just doing pickups and deliveries of curbside, you know, freight. Okay. 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 So this, this is mostly day cab. This work. is touch freight. <laughs> this is touch so, freight. This is touch freight. But this is day cab work though. Well, they have two different, you know, uh, I want to say C and V vehicles that they use for their P and D. They have tractor trailers, the 42 foot. They have the, um, I think it's like a 32 box, 32 foot box truck that they use. So they would use like those two different commercial vehicles to do their pickup and delivery. Why don't you make me? Double espresso, macchiato, with extra foam. You got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why don't you make it like your life depends on it? You have a box truck, and the other one is a, a thirty a thirty two foot trailer. So the tractor that you be driving is a day cab, right? Yes, yes, they do have day cab. They they cab trailers that the drivers would use to do the P and D. So you're not fired. Uh, you just got you just got laid off. 
But how long have you been working for the company, like all together, before you Just was laid for off? About two, about two months. Okay. Do you know the reason? Uh, did they give you a reason why you was laid off? No. That no, no. I mean, I hate to. I know you said don't do it, but. No, there was no disciplinary action or anything of the sort. I didn't have any, you know, interpersonal bad experiences with people. I mean, there was this one guy who repeatedly kept on using the N word when he, when he was training me. However, I never brought that up to the terminal manager or anybody because I didn't want to be that. You don't want to say that guy, but that girl, you know, I didn't want to be that person, so I never brought it up. So no. I never had any issues or write-ups for them to, um, yeah, I, I think I just got. So you wasn't, so you wasn't fired for anything, but again, did they give you a, you, you already said that they didn't give you a reason for a layoff. So in your mind, in your opinion, why is it so hard for them to give you uh, the letter that you required that states that you was just laid off and not fired? I think, I think, I, okay, this is what I think it is. This is what it is and what it ain't. Okay, I think that I got caught up as a new employee in the red tape of the co of the hostile contract negotiations with the local 707 Teamsters. I think I got caught up in that red tape. In addition to that, I think that they, you know, um, didn't give me the letter due to them having a third party vendor, which is again, Thomas and company. I forgot where they're located, but I think it's like in Tennessee, I think it is, who they've been working with. Cause I asked them for all this information, Thomas and company. They said that they've been contracted uh, with, with YRC freight since January, 2012. So I guess I'm saying, maybe this is part of the mismanagement you know, within the company, if you have salary administrative staff, you have salary HR staff, why aren't they able to facilitate employee requests for, for verification, you know, or letters or what have you? Why does the employee have to go to this third party vendor, I mean, excuse me, contract at Thomas and Company that you're paying to do the job that YRC Freight employees could do the administration and the um hr department should be able to handle and facilitate those requests and and you damn sure shouldn't have to give a third party vendor excuse me, i keep saying vendor contract the thomas and company who you owe and the name of them it's really none of their business i just need to, what i needed them to verify was my hire date my last day of active work um, you know, before the the date of uh of the layoff, my hourly wage, and and if they wanted to additionally put in there that there is no projected restart date, that would have been helpful as well. And that general letter could have you could have, could have been used not only for my landlord but for my creditors and for the Department of Labor, who you know I have mentioned that previously. I had went to, while, you know, to, to see if I could get job placement or what have you, and they had me in the system as still being actively employed, but it's not showing that I'm in a layoff status, and I could have provided that letter to the Department of Labor as well to, you know, get services. Right now, you're, you, you're pretty much upset because of the fact that they haven't provided you with the letter but let me ask you uh as as how long have you had your cdl i've had my cdl for about 20 plus years but i i you know i really used it because at the time i had different you know uh career you know career uh goals i was i was in nurse and i used to work at nasa university medical center out in east metal long island um, I used to work at Holly Patterson. That's a, that's a nursing home, a geriatric center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Picks you up, 
It calms you down. It's the lifeblood that drives the dreams of champions. But during those 20 years, you was a you was a class B CDL holder, right? Yes. Okay. And in order to get in order to upgrade to your class A, you decided to go through YRC for your class A CDL hold. I mean for your class A CDL, right? So during the time in the academy, obviously everything worked out to your favor because you ended up getting your CDLA through them and you was, you know, was put on put on an account and got a job through YRC. You mentioned uh earlier what you said that if anybody goes through the academy, they gotta of course sign a contract, a two year contract. But in the midst of that contract, if they break it for whatever reason, YRC will sue them? I mean, that's the first time I heard something like that. I always thought that companies, if you break a contract, uh, companies will come after you in your, I mean, come after you uh, financially through your creditors and every, I mean, through your credit report and everything like that. I, I never heard of them actually suing you or pursuing suing you for break a for breach of contract i mean is that i mean i i i'm just saying i i haven't heard of it but i is it written anywhere uh that you had to sign and you actually read that or or what okay this is what it is and what it ain't. I had I went into the academy with my B class. I had the endorsements for Tanker and Hazmat already. I had the permit with the A class doubles and triples. Now they evaluate you on a weekly basis. It's supposed to be the duration of four weeks. However, in actuality, that's not true. You're only given three weeks of training. One of those weeks is dedicated out of the four weeks is that first week is dedicated exclusively to watching videos and testing out on the material that you viewed, you know, online on the, you know, on the TV screen and projector or whatever. After that, you have three weeks in which you are evaluated on a weekly basis. Now I went into the Academy that first, that, um, excuse me, that first week of actually being on the range, after I received my evaluation, they had said that I wasn't world ready because they, they test you at the facility I was at, which, has, which was the Hagerstown, Maryland um, terminal. They, t they, they first started me out teaching me how to back up, how to do straight backs, and then if you pass that, <laughs> They uh, put you like doing the offsets and the parallel, and then they would take you around. Was there anywhere that was written on that you had to sign whether or not that the contract was broken, that the company would sue you? Was that, was that, what, did you read that anywhere or did you have to sign? No, I anywhere? did not read that. Okay. No, I did not read that in any contract in the language. I was just trying to, I was giving you that backstory just to clarify. I know I did not end up getting my A-class license from them based on the evaluation. So I still have the permit. However, because I had my B-class with the endorsements that they sought, they still hired me as a P and D local driver and they were still giving me training to re-enter into the academy, whether it was in Hagerstown, Maryland, or whether it was in Maybrook, Ohio, or Pennsylvania. Okay, because like I said before, I I mean if you break the contract for in, for whatever reason, I I I know that some companies will come after you. Uh, they'll put they'll put all that information on your credit report. They they usually don't uh, come after you to sue you sue or anything you. like that. 
Right, but when I when I was mentioning this, this was mentioned to me. Now, how true it is or not, because it wasn't again in writing. I was told that there would be a legal process of a filing to put you into collections. Yeah, that's the yeah that's that's the credit report. <laughs> so yeah, they're gonna come. They're gonna they're gonna put you in collections, and it's gonna be on your credit report, and you're gonna just get collection calls that's about it uh that's that's the, about the extent of it you know um as far as that particular collection company you know uh turning it over to you know do to court filings and stuff like that i haven't heard of it as far as the company right. itself they 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 pretty much pass it off to to an outside company to the collect the the debt that that varies by state by state so you know you know that you know that that can so from what i'm hearing so you you went through the 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 program but for some odd reason you didn't you 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 didn't come out of the program but they still hired you though okay so are you are are you um are you looking for a job right now I mean, you still, so basically, you're still a class yes. B holder. Yes, with the permit, with the A class permit, with doubles and triples, in addition to the endorsements of Tanker and Hazmat and a uh, tow truck and school bus. <laughs> okay, yes, so. That's are, correct. So are you looking for, are are you looking for a job right now? And what, where are you at in, in that regards? Well, yes, ever since I got the text message back in May telling me from the terminal manager, telling me not to come in into further notice. And that was basically, you know, the, the synopsis of, of what it, you know, entailed. Yes, I, I felt that at that point it was time to look for a new job. I had explained that I had went to the Department of Labor for job placement and or training because it's still an objective for me to get my A class license, you know, and when I went to the Department of Labor, I was told that according to them in their system, it's still showing I'm actively employed, you know, and that's, and I try to explain to them, that's not the case, you know, I'm in a layoff status and, you know, just to reiterate, I didn't even had the decency of being informed I was in a layoff status from the terminal manager who sent me that text message back in May. I didn't find that out in two weeks later after constantly playing telephone tag, going through the prompt to speak with somebody that I finally got through to that lady Brenda in the HR garnishment department of YRC Freight located in Kansas. And she's the one that informed me that I am in a hard layoff status is what she's Stated to me verbatim. Good morning. Can I take your order? Can I get a tall chai? And a large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti. Yeah, the biggest one you got. A venti is large. No, venti is twenty. Are Are you still looking for uh, for employment? And where are you yeah. at in that regards? <laughs> I'm at a standstill because, you know, the Department of Labor is showing that I am still actively employed. Now, I'm about to play devil's advocate. What does the Department of Labor has to do with you looking for another trucking job that you can actually call and say, hey, are you hiring? And if so, here's my credentials. Let's get it going. What? What does that have to do with the Department of Labor? Well, the reason why I chose to go, why I elected to go through the Department of Labor versus going through an employer through Indeed is because they have job training and placement opportunities where they have a contraction, excuse me, a contract, I believe, with outside vendors that if they hire X amount, X amount of people that have, you know, file for unemployment or what have you, that they will get credit for that. Okay, so I thought that that would be an advantage for me. And in addition to that, I felt that I will also be eligible for the CDLA class training. 
through the Department of Labor because in New York State they have a, a they have a specialty unit that has they have a specialty career excuse me career center that deal specifically with industrial jobs such as CDL driving and construction. They have their own division just to spe- just specifically for that. Okay. All right. Uh, again, YRC is unionized. So d- you, did you, you mentioned that you went, tried to go through the union to get, uh, to get additional help. Yes. What, I, I mean, the union couldn't do nothing for you? They never responded back. I've left several messages on their 516 area call folder, but they never responded back. You know, I asked them, could they help facilitate, you know, communication with the terminal manager as a liaison? They never responded back. I also, in that voice message, asked them if they could give me any advisement or if they could give me a letter indicating I'm in a layoff status. I never re- received a response. But they want a $500 initiation fee, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, sounds like... Uh I don't know what it sounds like. It, it, it sounds like uh, YRC uh, is definitely going through some things right now. Uh, and that's probably the reason why they laid off a handful of their their drivers. Um, but I can understand where you coming from. You know, you kind of like, well, just give you something uh, or proof that I'm laid off and I'm not fired. You know, just so that I can, you know, give, you know, give these people so that I can maintain a, you know, a a life balance out here until either you get another job or YRC get they get they act together. So, uh, Andy, I I do hope uh, that that it does work out for you in the future. Um, You uh, of course, you are a CDL holder, you know, B class. So. I I wouldn't I I I wouldn't uh foresee that you couldn't get anything in the New York area as far as, you know, delivery or anything like that, but I I definitely hope uh I definitely hope everything work out between you and YRC in the fu- in the future though. Well, I thank you for that lockout, man. You know, I'm not too optimistic at this juncture. To be honest, the way that I've been handled, you know, or mishandled, such as their funds, you know, I I really wouldn't feel comfortable even going back. You know, communication is off. You know, you have to jump through hurdles and deal with third-party contractors, Thomas and company, that they're paying to do a job that their employees could do in HR, or administratively at the terminals, you know? So, I mean, at this, at this point, my um, objective is to hopefully um, get into a, a, a grant program with the Department of Labor that will pay for my CDL A class training and or an opportunity with the LTL mega carrier, you know, so I can, you know, sustain my lifestyle as, as you, have, you mentioned, you know? Yeah, I'm